Amen. I hope everybody had a great Christmas, right? There's one amen, so the rest of you had a bad Christmas, it sounds like. I get it. I understand. Uh, we had a great Christmas with friends and, and, and mainly family, but uh, had a good time and got to open up gifts. I don't know, the older you get, it just doesn't seem like it just goes by quicker, doesn't it? Like all the hustle and bustle and you get to, you know, smash on some turkey and some ham or whatever you eat at your family function, but it just goes by really, really quickly. I'm a gift card person. Anyone else a gift card person? I just, nobody else? Okay, so I'm, uh, Lord, help me then. I need, to, I need to get better at that. Then maybe I need to go get, get some deeper thought into that. I just do gift cards because most people, everything I buy them, they take it back anyways. Can anybody feel me on that, right? Uh, you can be honest in the house of God, by the way, if you're a gift card person. There's plenty of grace at the altar for you, I promise. And, uh, but we had a great Christmas. I hope you did too. And here we are getting ready to go into the new year. And I wanted to take time today to just really reflect for a few minutes, if we may, because that's, that's what a lot of us do. We reflect on maybe the good, the bad, and the ugly, right, of 2019. But I hope that our reflection leads us to this conviction that I don't want to be the same way in 2020, okay? And so we're doing this time of reflection today, but we're also going to be incorporating communion. So let me just give you this real quickly. Behind you at the back two walls to my left, your right, or left and right, your left and right as well, the opposite direction. Uh, we do have some cups there for communion. We do have gluten-free options if you are gluten-free. We do have that on the back table back here as well. But I want us to take time, and I wanted to incorporate commu uh, communion into this time of reflection because Jesus commanded us that every time we gather together, or maybe not, not, not excuse me, do this in remembrance of me. Some churches do it every single Sunday. Some do it once a month. Some do it every quarter. Some every six months. Regardless of the frequency, we never want to take it in a nonchalant manner, right? So we not only do we want to reflect on 2019 for ourselves, but we want to reflect and end this year on what Jesus did for us. Can I just be very blunt? The blessings you have would not be possible unless what he did on the cross 2,000 years ago. Does that make sense? That's the greatest blessing you could ever have, and that's the greatest gift that you could ever have. So if you don't know Jesus today, and I'm not talking about I grew up in church and I sang all the songs and my daddy was a deacon and all this kind of other stuff. I mean, if you really know him and you're madly in love with him and you have a relationship with him, if you don't know that today, my prayer is that you would receive that greatest gift today. Because I promise you it will change your life. I wasn't going to do this, but I want to just share about one minute of my testimony real quickly. Because I think sometimes we, we forget what God has really brought us through. So can I be a little PG-13 on post-Christmas? Is that okay? Or we got to stay PG? Okay, we'll be PG-13 real quickly. Parents, we may need to do some earmuffs, but that's okay. Um, if you have to do that, if you, whatever. But I, I, I want to just be really real with you. 20 years ago, I was drowning in sex addiction. I was... Popping pills, I was smoking marijuana, my house was the party house and the drug house, but I was the kid that grew up in church, that was in a th Christmas plays, you know what I'm talking about? Boy, I, I, was, I was a good little Hebrew Mexican kid, I was good in the play, I was really good. I was really good at those plays, right? I knew all the Christianese, or some people call it churchianese, right? I knew all the religious jargon, but inside I was empty. And at the age of 18, I walked away from everything that I knew. I'm just going to be real with you. I thought I was in love. Anybody ever been there? Right? You don't have to raise your hand. I thought I was in love, and I settled for an artificial or a lesser love. And for six years of my life, I was in a very dark place, abusing alcohol, abusing pills, abusing whatever you could think of, just to fill this hole in my heart. Okay? Now, on the outside, I looked like, the stereotypical poster child Christian boy, right? Because we were always the first ones to there and the last ones to leave, right? We were dedicated. We did everything for the church. But inside, I didn't know him. And so I spent six years of my life in a very, very dark place. And in 1998, January 4th on a Sunday morning, right? I'm just going to be real. Can I be real, baby? My, my wife gets mad at me sometimes. I get too real. But can I just be real? I was living with my wife, who wasn't my wife at the time, which, by the way, is still considered a sin according to Scripture. Not hating, right? I know we can't talk that way in church anymore because people get offended and their feelings and all that kind of stuff, but it's the Bible, okay? 
I'll amen myself. Amen, Rob. You're a great preacher. You're one of the best preachers I've ever heard in my whole entire life. Golly, you're a handsome-looking Mexican man up there. Jeez, right? I'm just being real with you. We either got to go by the gospel or we got to throw it in the trash. You understand? So I was living in sin, as the old people called it in my church, living in the flesh with my wife, who is my girlfriend. But I want to show you something in the midst of my depravity and my wickedness and my sinfulness and all my junk and my crap and whatever other words you want to throw in there and mess, ear must. I should have said ear must before I said that for some. Listen how God works. Listen, I want you to see this. This is not part of the message, and if i got to cut this out, I feel like the Lord wanted me to share this with you today. My sister dies in a car accident on the way to church. There were six kids in the car. She was one that lost her life that day at 13 years old. And on the way to the hospital, God begins to speak to my heart. Now, I want you to see something because in my sin and in your sin, our tendency is to run away from the cross. That's nowhere in the gospel. That's the time that you should run violently and passionately to the cross because you have a father who is radically pursuing you. And he doesn't want you to settle for the lesser love. He doesn't want you to settle for the artificial. He says, no, my love is greater than what you're settling for. So in the midst of that, God wakens this wicked, depraved heart, and it changed my life. And for the first time, I knew what it meant to be born again. Oh, man, the glorious grace of Jesus. Amen. But here's even the better part. Listen, it gets better. In the relationship that I was in sin with, God was so sovereign that 22 years later, she's been my wife. Amen. See, God can take your most sinful junk and mess and situation, and he can really turn it around for your good. Now, listen, your good doesn't mean your happiness. Your good doesn't mean your happiness. It means that he will take whatever jacked up situation you're in and he will mold you and he will shape you and he will use it in such a way that will bring his life glory. Amen. He has paid the highest price. Yes. Amen. It gets even better than that. He saved my best friend. His name was Crawl Daddy. That just tells you what kind of guy he was. He was a grateful dead guy, man. He, he, he was homeless and had a hat that said beer on it and had corduroys with holes and had B.O. to the hundredth power. And God saved him, man. I'm just telling you, don't run away from God in your situation today. Because if he can use me, this is so cliche in the church, but I mean it. I wanted to get real with you today. He can use anyone. That's the PG-13 version, the short version. But God's grace is so sufficient, right? God's grace is so sufficient. So why do you bring that up, Pastor Rob? I bring it up because I wanted to take this time of reflection. I never want to forget. I'm not highlighting the sin. That's why I didn't get into the specifics. I'm highlighting the Savior, okay? But what I want you to see is you should never forget what, where God has brought you from. For me, I was literally in the pits of hell, and God's hand was not too short to reach me. But we live in this American Christianese or this American Christian culture that I don't know where it came from, but we teach people, maybe it's inadvertently, indirectly, to run away because they got to live some standard. Jesus is the standard. You would never meet the standard apart from your faith in Christ. He is the standard. So I can preach to you today, even with all the mess and the junk of yesterday, trying to tell me you don't deserve to be up here. You don't des I don't deserve to be up here, but because I put my faith in the one whose righteousness never fails, he is the one who makes us worthy, not myself. Amen. For the glory of God. He's getting glory through this vessel today because I once was this, but now I'm this. Amen. And he wants to do the same thing for you today. Is that okay to share that? Is that okay to share that, that he loves you with a never-ending love today? Amen. And so I wanted to take just a moment. I'm just going to take just a few minutes here, and then we're going to transition into our time of communion. 
and I should have done this at the beginning, I want to welcome all those that are watching us online. Thank you so much for watching us and supporting our ministry. We greatly appreciate you doing that. Drop us a comment, a like, a share, whatever else you can do, and uh, let us know where you're, where you're watching us from. So here's the deal. I said, how can we look at this time of reflection today? I wanted to look at it through our three main anchor words, and that is love, serve, reach. You see it on our worship guide. You see it on our website. You see it on the windows out here. Everywhere you go in our building or in our marketing stuff, you see love, serve, reach. And that wasn't just three words that we came up with just to be a cool church and make a T-shirt or a coffee mug or whatever. But we say that we exist, you know, to love unconditionally, serve sacrificially, and reach you so ever. And here's why. Can we put those four things up on the screen? Here's why we do that, right? We do that because we want people to know God. Now, notice I didn't say we want people to make decisions. Because the Christian life is more than just making a one-time emotional decision, okay? Number two is I want people to find freedom. There's people in this room today that the mess of yesterday is keeping them from the mission that God has for them today. Maybe it's sexual struggles. Maybe it's vices with substance abuse. Maybe it's drugs. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe success, which is not a bad thing unless we make it an ultimate thing. Maybe money is keeping us from really finding freedom and living the life that God has for us. Number three is we love and we serve and we reach because we want people to discover their purpose. Do you know how many times in the past 20 years of ministry that I have found young and old, people that have sat in church for years that don't know what their true purpose is in the body of Christ? And they just wander from year to year aimlessly and never have any direction. We don't want that here. That's what the next steps is for. We want to help you begin that journey on the right foot. And then number four is we want you to make a difference. We want you to make a difference in your home. We want you to make a difference at work. We want to make you to make a difference in your sphere of influence or wherever you go. We don't believe your life will ever make sense until you begin to live on purpose and make a difference for the glory of God. This is why we exist. This is why we say we exist. And so I wanted to look at this and go, did we do, did we love, did we serve, did we reach, not only individually, but as corporately as a church, did we do these things? Because if the gospel has truly changed us, this is not a burden for us. This should be a blessing to us. If the gospel has truly changed us, we should be excited about wanting people to know God and being free and discovering their purpose and making a difference. If the gospel has truly changed us, which it should. So the first one is, did we love unconditionally? They're going to put it on the screen there. Right? I don't have sermon notes for you today. If you're a regular attender here or a member, you know that we normally do sermon notes. We're giving these two weeks off. But just want you to really pay attention today and really just focus and reflect. Did I love this way in 2019? I mean, seriously, did we love this way? Listen to this. Did people around you know that you love them, that you accepted them? Okay. Did they? Or were you just pushing your Christian agenda? Yes, isn't that what we do sometimes? We have an agenda. Well, I'll, well I, I love you, but if you could fix these three things. But Jesus didn't say that on the cross, did he? Did people feel loved? Did people feel accepted? Did they feel appreciated? If not, then I'm almost willing to bet that it's because we don't understand as believers that we have been fully loved and accepted. And if that's you today, I want to speak that into your life, that you are fully loved and you are fully accepted because of what Jesus has done. Condition here, if you have put your trust in him. You are fully loved and accepted. Did we love this way? See, the the reality is people don't need another scripture, right? Isn't that what we do sometimes? They don't need another scripture telling them that they're loved. They need children and people of God to start being that love to them. You know what I'm talking about? Because isn't that what we do? Well, let me pull out the old trusty here and let me give you 15 scriptures about God's love, but yet you're a butthole. true and they're going well this love mustn't have changed him because he's a jerk yes 
Can we just be real about, I mean, we can be real at the end of 2019. Stop telling people about the love and start being the love that's inside of you. Okay? You understand what I'm saying? Just start being the love to people. Hebrews chapter, can we put it up here, the book of Hebrews? They'll put it up here. It's one of my favorite scriptures, and it says this. This is talking about Jesus. If you don't know much about the Bible, the book of Hebrews was written, and what I believe and many scholars believe, some of you believe the apostle Paul wrote that. I I don't believe that. Um, I believe it's an unknown author, but that's a sermon for another day, okay? The unknown author is writing to primarily a Jewish audience here. And he says this, he understands, he's speaking of Jesus, the great high priest. In the Old Testament, the high priest would go uh, on behalf of the sins of the nation, that would have been Israel, and he would go into the place called the Holy of Holies, and he would make an atoning sacrifice for God's people. It's called the Day of Atonement, or the Jewish people call it Yom Kippur. This is what the author of Hebrews is talking about here, that Jesus, our great high priest, once and for all, he went in and made the one perfect sacrifice so we don't have to keep doing that every year for the sins of the people okay so this is what he says he understands humanity for as a man our magnificent king priest was tempted in every way just as we are and conquered sin in the language of the new testament what this really means is he understands the human condition so my question is if our savior understands the human condition understands this go through then shouldn't we be a church that does the same thing? But to be honest with you, I'm speaking universally, not just Celebration Church. I feel like we try to do our best to be welcoming and loving and accepting. But here's the thing. We can't preach a Savior that understands the human condition and be people who don't. He was broken and beaten and spit upon and humiliated because he understood what you and I were going through. You've been rejected today, he was rejected. You've had family turn on you, he's had family turn on him. You've been despised, he's been despised. He understands the human condition. Church, if we're going to change our cities, then we have to love this way. We have to understand. We have to start being love and quit doing catchy, cliche uh, Christian taglines and start living what God has done inside of us. You understand? We have to love unconditionally. Are you providing, are we providing a safe place to be delivered? Are we providing a safe place for people to be delivered of their hurts? When I grew up at the church I grew up in, I'm not hating. If some of you are watching online, I'm not hating. But I never could talk about my porn struggles. I could never talk about my drug addiction. I could never talk about anything in the church because in the church I grew up in, you just talked about victory all the time. But I was going straight to hell sitting right there in in one of those chairs because I didn't have an honest place. I would ask my wife. I would leave crying because I felt like I could never measure up. I'm just being really real with you today. If you're brand new today, please come back next week. We'll have a more lighter message, I promise. We'll all hold hands and sing to Jesus and all that kind of stuff, okay? I just want to be real with you. I don't want you to come sit here every week drowning in your struggles, and this is not a safe place for you to come and be delivered of those things and to confess those things and to talk about those things. But we have to be a people that understands the human condition. Yes? Okay. Number two. Well, let me, let me back up real quickly. I love what Bob Goff says. He's, I don't know if you've ever read any of his stuff, but I love Bob. He says this, it will be the people with the greatest love, not the most information, who will influence us to change. Church, we got to get our Ph.D. in God's love. The associates ain't going to work no more. The bachelor ain't going to work no more. We have to, this is the kind of love that we need if we want to change our workplaces, our families, our cities. Next one, serve sacrificially, right? Serve sacrificially. Hebrews 13, 6, once again, the author of Hebrews uh, 16, excuse me, says, do not neglect to do good what is good and to share for what God is pleased with such sacrifices, okay? 
Now, he's specifically talking to Jewish Christians here, and he's talking about people within the church. But not only should we do good and meet each other's needs and, 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 and do that internally, but we should also do that for our city and for those that are outside these four walls. All right? This is how we serve. We shouldn't serve when it's just comfortable. Right? God is not looking for people just to write checks. He's looking for people to say, my life is a blank check. Use it how you will. You understand that? I have to serve in such a way because here's the reality. Our human condition, we have to fight really hard about taking the road that provides us the greatest amount of comfort with the, the least amount of risk. Yes, if we're to be honest. We have to fight really hard when we, even in the church when we serve that way. How can I still serve in such a way that doesn't really cost me anything, but it makes me look religious and everybody's just like this. <laughs> look at that wonderful spiritual person. He deserves a gold star. That's not the kind of sacrifices that please God. See? He's not looking for worship with just our lips. It's what he criticized the religious people in his day for because he said, you can sing all these flattery words, you can do all these things, but your heart is far from me. Did we serve this way in 2019? Here's the other thing that we really got to fight hard as, as corporately and as a church is we have a really bad problem about focusing internally and forgetting about our cities. That's not serving sacrificially. That's not giving everything. Right? See, one of the best ways to break out of lukewarmness and spiritual mediocrity is to start making a difference in the life of others. Let me say that again because that's a word for someone today. Someone today came in here battling the spiritual. We called it in the church that I grew up in being lukewarm. I've heard about a billion sermons on that, huh? It's in the Bible. I call it spiritual mediocrity that we settle for checklist Christianity. We settle for a Christianity that doesn't cost us anything. And friend, I'm just going to be very blunt. A Christianity doesn't cost you anything. It's not being a Christian at all. It's not the gospel. It's not. Because how dare we, our Savior, hang on the cross, and we celebrate it, and we sing about it, we preach messages about it, but we live this comfortable Christian lifestyle that doesn't cost us jack. I don't know why I thought of this because my sense of humor is this way. Forgive me if you're brand new today, but I was watching some Chris Farley videos last night. You know what I'm talking about? I live in a van down by the river. For those that know who Chris Farley is from Saturday Night Live, but he would go up to him and go, Jack Squat! That's what your Christianity means if it doesn't cost you anything. I'm just being real with you. The gospel calls us to deny ourselves. And it cost us something. Now, you may be saying, well, Pastor Rob, boy, I was really looking for something a little bit lighter today. I don't know if I'm coming back. You didn't sing the songs that I like. You're not preaching the verses that I like. And just quite frankly, you're, you seem like a little mean Mexican man today. Listen, I'm not preaching. I don't believe in preaching angry preacher guy. That's not what I'm doing today. See, there, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you something here. We mix up condemnation and conviction. Condemnation is from the devil. If you're in Christ, there is no condemnation. But I am preaching in such a way that the Holy Spirit would convict you. And conviction always leads to closer intimacy with Jesus. There's a difference, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not preaching legalistic today. But I want you to fall in love with Jesus because when you're in love with Jesus, these are a byproduct of being madly in love with him. They're not burdensome, they're blessings that I get to love people. I get to serve in such a way that costs me something. See, God is more pleased with simple, sincere acts of kindness and love than he is me getting up here saying all this religious stuff that doesn't mean jack squat. Yes. That's what the Bible says. What are we doing? Did we do this in 2019? I love what Pastor Stan Stanley says. He says it this way. Your devotion to God is illustrated, demonstrated, and authenticated by your love for others. 
I love that, don't you? Living on purpose, being loved, serving people when it costs them something. See, our dream team here, every Sunday morning and Saturdays, they are here serving, right? I was going to make fun of her, but I won't today. But I will just for a second. Hope has made about a billion labels for you guys. And it drives me crazy. I'm just going to be honest with you. She's like, I'm like, oh, that looks good. No, it doesn't because they don't have a label on it. I'm like, you and your labels. It's good, though. We need labels. I think they're going to be in the kingdom of God somewhere, in like a real far off place on the other side. But, but no, seriously, people don't realize even something as simple as her. We have a breaker box back up there that was from the devil, I think. Because there's been like other churches here and like all this stuff was marked. And Hope sends us a message in our group text one day and goes, look what I've done. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I wouldn't have wasted that much of my time to do that. I would have just kept the guessing game going, right? But listen, that took her a long time to do that, and she did it because she wants to serve you guys. I know that sounds simple, and I'm not lifting up hope. There's, I could, uh, Jake, her husband, comes here and serves uh, tirelessly all the time. They stay here all day on Sunday sometimes doing stuff for all of you because they want to love you and serve you in such a way that costs them something. And they're like, oh, I got to do this because Pastor Rob preached about it. They do it because they go, I have been loved and I have been served by Jesus. I can go on and on. Betsy and all these others that drive 25, 30 minutes away. I mean, people every Sunday are serving because they realize what Jesus has done for them. You see? Serve in such a way that costs you something. The third and final thing is this. Not only should we love unconditionally and serve sacrificially, but we should be reaching whosoever. And I'm just going to be really real here today. I get asked all the time about whosoever. I get asked all the time, well, how do you get minorities to come to your church? Because I don't treat them like minorities. I love them like they're people made in the image of God. Because I don't look at skin color. Because I don't look at socioeconomic status. Because I don't look at what side of the tracks they're from. That's a little uncomfortable, isn't it? But if we're going to be God's people, then whosoever should be allowed to walk through those doors. You and I did not die for the sins of men, so we have no right to decide who comes through those doors. Last time I checked, it wasn't your blood spilled on the cross. And it wasn't my blood that was spilled on the cross. It was Jesus's, and his arms are wide open saying, no matter where you're at, no matter what your skin color is, no matter what side of the tract you're from, you are welcome here. Amen? Reach whosoever, but to do that. And this is the most simple scripture that we gloss over, John 3, 16. We could all quote it in our sleep. For God so loved the world. What? That he gave his one and only son that whoever, only the Mexican people, no. Only the black people, no. Only the white folks, no. Who? Ever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Even the people with tattoos. Right? Can I just, I'm just being real with you. Because there are some churches that believe if you have tattoos, you're not going. I'm not hating. I don't have a tattoo because I'm too big of a sissy to get one. I'm just being honest with you. My wife will tell you, I cry when I go to the PCP doctor, the urgent care. I'm like, oh, God, well, I don't want to be here right now. <laughs> right? Well, they're, they're not dating their own kind. Are they people made in the image of God for the glory of God? Then they're God's own kind. Yes? I don't care if you disagree with me or not. Because God said, whosoever comes to him and believes shall not perish and have everlasting life. And if my God is not big enough to save you because you have tattoos, because you're in a mixed relationship, or because of this or that, then I don't want to serve that kind of God because he's a puny God. Come on now. You cannot call yourself a child of God and have any form of prejudice in your heart because the Spirit will slay it, will slaughter it, will crucify it because that's not from Jesus. Amen. 
Tell them too real? Okay. I'm just being real with you. Let me tell you something. You and I would never choose God on our best day. And aren't you glad that God didn't wait for you to choose him? <laughs> Can I do that again? I don't even know what that is. It's like some Irish, Mexican thing I learned on TV somewhere. I don't know what happened. It's like the Lord of the dance. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm glad that God didn't let me drown in my religiosity. I'm glad that God didn't let me drown in my sinfulness. But that he said, no, I have a purpose for you. And I want you because you're mine. Amen. On our best day, ladies and gentlemen, he, we would never choose him. Luke 19, 10 says it this way, and I'll close with this. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who were lost. We need to be a church that is seeking people in our city to bring them to a man who will save them. Did we do that in 2019? Did we forget what we have been saved from? How many people did we invite to worship with us this year? How many people did we share the glorious gospel with? Ladies and gentlemen, if we're not doing this, then I'm willing to bet that it's because we have forgotten that he has loved and served and reached us. That's the key truth here is that we love and we serve and we reach because it mirrors the one who has loved and served and praise God for his glorious grace that he has reached us when we were not pursuing him. When we were running the opposite direction, he pursued us. Yes. Praise God for that. Are we doing this individually and are we doing this? Corporately. See, he loved us when we were unlovable. He served his greatest enemies, which is you and me, through his death, through his burial, through his resurrection. He saved us not on our, because of our skin color, not because of our denomination, not because we had great parents, not because we had great lineage or heritage, but solely by his sovereign grace. Amen. Now you say, well, Pastor Rob, why is this so important? Why are you so passionate about this? Because I believe the happiness and the joy and the fulfillment that you are trying to find in everything else is directly tied to you living on purpose for your Savior. I'm going to share this one thing with you. It's true. My, our leaders will tell you this. We have seen this, and I've seen this in 20-something years of ministry, that the people that are serving the people that are living this way, they're thriving in life. Not because they're special, but because they realize there's a direct correlation. I love what John Piper says, John, and I've said it many times before, that God is most glorified in us when we are most satisfied in him. There's something directly tied. It's like our marriages are better. Our workplace is better. Our lives are healthier because we're living on purpose for Jesus. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not talking about just serving here. I'm talking about living this way seven days a week. Amen. Final thing is this. You say, well, Pastor Rob, I've really blown it then. So have I. But thank God there's enough grace to go into 2020. Amen. He has more grace than you mess ups. Yes? He has more grace than you do sin. He has more grace than your failures. And this morning he's saying, will you just run to me? I'm going to do what I did last week. If you want to come, great. If you don't, I'm just going to open up the altars again today. And if you just say, man, I need to come this morning and I just need to cry out to God and I just want, I just want, I need to know that he loves me without a shout. If that's you, there's nothing special about up here, but if you want to come, you can. If not, here's what I do pray right there in your seat. If you don't know him, or maybe you were like me, maybe you grew up religious, but you didn't know him for the first time, you can surrender to him today. Right there. Say, God, listen, I'm, I'm done. 
I make a really crappy God. I make a really horrible king. I, I'm giving you all the keys of the kingdom today. Forgive me. And you know what I love about God? He's like, oh, I've just been waiting on you. <laughs> I just love you. I just, I've been sitting here hoping and that you would see this. He loves you, my friends. He loves you. Or maybe you're a believer and you've just drifted far away and you said, no more. Today I'm coming home. Well, I can I just tell you there's a big party waiting to happen. Let the religious people get mad. You come on home. We'll fire up the grill, whatever we got to do. He wants you home with him today. Can we pray? Father, we love you. We thank you. I just thank you, God, that no matter how far we run, no matter how often we settle for trivial and artificial things, that you still pursue us with a love that we cannot fully comprehend. So, God, here's our stuff. Here's our junk. We're checking our baggage at the foot of the cross today. And we're saying from this day forward, I'm yours. I'm yours. Will you save me today? Will you rescue me? In Jesus' name, amen. We're just going to take just a couple of minutes. If you do want to come to the front, that's fine. No one's going to harass you or bother you or anything like that. But just come on, don't, don't let pride stand in the way. Come on. Right? The cheese dip's still going to be hot when you get there, I promise. Okay? But just don't let anything stop you today. Run to Jesus today. Will you lead us, Jake? Christ is risen. Christ is risen. And Christ will come. Died and yes, Christ is risen. Come on, and Christ will come again. Sing it if you believe it. And Christ has died, and Christ is risen. Come on, and Christ will come again. Christ has died and Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Come on, he's not going to leave you stranded today. And Christ has died and Christ is risen. And Christ will come again. Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Can we do the celebrate part? Celebrate his death and rising. Lift your eyes. Come on. Proclaim his coming. Celebrate his death and rising. Come on. Lift your eyes. Come on. Lift your eyes. Even in our celebrate deepest, darkest situation, we can celebrate today his goodness. Lift your eyes, proclaim his come. Celebrate his death and rise. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes. Celebrate his death and rise. Lift your eyes, proclaim his come. Celebrate his death and rise. Lift your eyes. Lift your eyes, celebrate his death and rising. Lift your eyes, proclaim his come. Celebrate his death. All right, sing it with us. Christ has died. Lift your eyes. Christ has died. And come on. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Come on. Christ.
Christ has died and Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Yes, Father, we just thank you today for Jesus. That you just haven't died. But you rose from the grave. And the greatest news of all is you're coming again. And we thank you for that, Jesus. Amen. Listen, just stay where you're at just for a second. We're going to transition into our time of communion. So I'm going to set up some instructions for you today. Um, we never want to take this in a nonchalant or just, you know, oh, it's something we got to do because we're in church. That's, we're commanded to really take an introspective look, to reflect, okay, to take this seriously. And Pastor BJ is going to talk about it here in just a second, but the instructions are simple. Um, we have two tables right here, one to my left, one to your right. Uh, the gluten-free options are over here on the right-hand side or your left. So if you're gluten-free and you need to take those, that's going to be over there for you. Um, what we did to make it simple is we used the cups like a lot of churches do that have the wafer in inside. But how many people know those things can be really hard to open sometimes, okay? So we have some additional wafers that you can use if you need those. Did we put those out? There was a box of additional wafers that we should have put out. Did we put those out? We don't know. Everybody's looking like I'm crazy. Okay. Um, let's, let's make that happen. They're probably in my office or they're somewhere here. Let's make that happen, guys, real quickly. But just real quickly, let's, let's if, if you want to take part in this today, um, we want to encourage you to do that. You can simply go to the table in the back. You can get up from your seat, and you can go get one of those. If you can't get your cup open for whatever reason, we'll provide you a wafer um, as well if you need that, a separate one. Our dream team will direct you how to get there. It's right here in the back. So if you want to do that now, Jake's going to continue to lead us. And um, he's going to continue to lead us in this song while you're doing that. And then I'm going to turn it over to Pastor BJ. As you're making your way back to your seat, I just kind of want to talk a little bit about what communion is. Um, I mean, when you think of the word communion, I think of common union, as if there's something that we have in common that we share. And in the scriptures, when Jesus did this, this is actually based on the Feast of Passover. And in Luke, where I'm kind of going to be spending a little time with on it. Luke, desi uh, Luke says that Jesus desired to have this supper with, with his disciples for two very important reasons. Um, it was going to be Jesus' last one on earth with, with his disciples before his death, and it was during the Jewish day of Passover. And during the meal, Jesus took a couple of elements that were common and that were used for the Passover, and he gave them an extraordinary meaning. He took bread and he took wine in John 6 48 Jesus says I am the bread of life and when we take the bread we're seeing Jesus saying he says this is my body broken for you so I want to read from Luke 22 verses 19 through 21 and it's going to should be on the screen for you to follow along with before we actually partake of it I want to read the scripture so you can kind of see and it says when he had taken some bread and given thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, This 
cup which is poured out for you is the new covenant of my blood. So when we do this here in a second, we're remembering the price that Jesus paid and the blood that he shed so that we can have this right relationship with him, that we can be a part of his family. And I want you to know that communion is specifically for believers. And I love the fact that we are doing this right after our response time because if today, up to that point, you didn't know him and you said during that response time, Lord Jesus, be my Savior, come into my life, you are now, and you put your faith and trust in him, you're a believer, you are invited to partake of this with us. If you are a member of this church, you're invited. If you're a member of another church somewhere else, guess what? It's not my table. It is the table of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you are invited. It com- it just joins us together because it is a common union among believers. doesn't matter where you are, where you're from. If you are a believer and your faith is in Christ Jesus and he has changed your life, you are invited to this table. And if you did not have an opportunity or you have not done that yet, and you say, BJ, I don't know Jesus. I am not a part of this family. It is not too late. You can take a moment right here, right now, and you can confess. You can say, Jesus, save me. I'm a sinner. I put my faith and trust in you and the work that you have accomplished on the cross, and you are invited. 1 Corinthians 11 tells us that when we take of this, we must examine our, ourselves. We don't want to eat of it or partake of it in an unworthy manner. How fitting that we're doing this on a day where we just talked about reflecting on the past year. So I want to take a moment and just want to pray over us before we partake of this. So let's pray together. God, search me. Know my heart. Search all of us and know our hearts and show us if there's anything in our lives that doesn't glorify you or anything in our lives that has separated our connection and our relationship with you. Cleanse us of any hurtful, evil way and lead us in your everlasting way. Lord, if you cleanse me, I will be cleansed. If you clean us, God, we will be clean. If you wash us with your blood, we will be cleansed. I confess, God, that I haven't loved or trusted you like I should have. But I thank you for your forgiveness of my sins. And today I put my hope and I put my trust in you, Lord Jesus. So we're going to do this in two steps. We're going to take the bread first, and then we're going to do the grape juice. Now, this may be a little challenging, but we're going to kind of peel the top off. like me, you probably just pulled the wafer with the top for the juice, so you want to get that out from the top. And in 1 Corinthians, when Paul is giving his instructions on communion, here's what he says. It says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So we're going to take it, and we're going to eat it. Now you want to make sure you got the juice open. And in the same way, the scripture continues on. He took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And at this time, if you're ready, we're going to drink it. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the gift of your son. Jesus, we thank you for the gift that you have given us in your life and in your death. We thank you for the hope we have in your resurrection. In your resurrection, God, that makes it possible for us to live again when we confess our sins. God, we know that our sins are buried with you. Lord Jesus, and we are now new creations in you. We are members of a new family. We just give you praise and honor and glory in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, as we get ready to close shop for this, I want to ask Jake 
Can we do that celebrate part today? As we do our offering a little differently here. We have two brown boxes in our cafe, I mean, excuse me, in our worship center right here, right in the back. And this is mainly for those that call Celebration Church their faith family or if you're a regular attender here, don't no pressure to give if this is your first time with us or if the Lord leads you to give, you give, okay? But as, as we do this and just take this, just a minute or two more of reflection, I, I just want to do that celebrate. Can we, can we do that celebrate part that we're celebrating today what he's done for us? The other thing I'm going to remind you of real quickly is about the connect card in the back of your seat there. If you are new with us or this is your second time, we would love for you to fill that out and drop it in one of the brown boxes on your way out. We have a little gift for you right out here at the front door. And then finally is this, is that um, we are beginning a brand new series next week called I Will. It's the most challenging series we've ever done here at Celebration Church. And I want to beg all of you to be here at all four Sundays. Bring a friend with you. I promise you it's going to be life-changing. Can we do that part real quick? All right, here's what we need help in. Can we get some hand clappers? Can we get... Come on, stand up with us today as we get ready to leave. Can we go to that celebrate part, guys? Here we go. Come on. Celebrate his death and rising. Come on. your eyes and praise is coming. Come on. Celebrate his death and rising. Lift your eyes. Come on. Celebrate. Celebrate his death and rising. Lift your eyes. Come on. Lift your eyes this morning. Celebrate his death. Christ has come. Come on, sing it with us. Come on. Come on. Celebrate his death and rising. Lift your eyes for place. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Come on, church. Christ has died. He's come. He's coming again. Christ has died and Christ is risen. Christ will come. Listen, we enjoyed having you guys with us in worship. Happy New Year to all of you guys. Have a great Sunday. We'll see some of you soon.